morning. First of all, we just want to say give honor to God who is our creator, our maker, and who is our heavenly father. We honor him and we thank him for this moment and this opportunity that he continues to grant to us each and every day. We honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who went to Calvary to die for the sins of the world to give to us hope and an opportunity of life it was impossible for us to gain any other way I don't think that there is enough words to express gratitude for what the Lord has done for us I guess about the only thing that we can do is just try to live up to his desire for us the best we possibly can. We realize that means how we treat one another for he said as much as you do unto the least of my little one, you've done that unto me. We honor the precious Holy Spirit where the Lord when he left he didn't lead us without a comforter. He didn't lead us, leave us without a guide. He sent the Holy Spirit not to be an outside force, but to be an inside force. A force that would come in each of our minds and hearts to speak directly to us, to convict us, to point out our wrongnesses and our shortcomings and and to lift us up and encourage our spirits, to bring us joy, to bring us peace. The Lord has provided help for us day by day. And certainly we give him praise and we thank him and we thank him for the brothers that are here this morning, those who are here, those who are come to make it possible each Sunday that we are able to to bring forth the word of God, to bring forth a message to a church that are listening from homes and different places and, and also those who are maybe not members of this church but maybe just want to tune in every Sunday to hear what thus says the Lord, what it is that the Lord has put on our heart and we want to remind everybody again that those who may have not accepted Christ as their Savior, that you can do, you don't have to be in this building or in the church building to accept Christ as your Savior. But you can accept the Lord just where you are. If you're not quite clear about that, how to do that, if you need some guidance, and as I try to do, I'll try to leave my number, you can contact me, and I'll be more than happy to to spend some time with you and, and help give you guidance and share some scriptures with you to help you to know what it is that you need to do. Uh, my number is 731-234-1849. I want to say to all of the Bible Hill members, God bless you and we are continuing to miss you. We want to continue to encourage you to stay committed, to stay strong, to maintain your focus, and to keep on praying and keep on hoping that one day we'll be able to assemble again together. And it's been said that the absence makes the heart grow fonder. Maybe we would just be more fond of one another when we are able to assemble again together. But there's one thing for certain that we know that God is not in the dark about what's going on. God is in the plan. Sometimes we don't understand the plan of God. Sometimes we don't know what the plan of God is. But the scripture says all things work out for the good. Those who love the Lord and they that are called according to his holy purpose. And we know that we are called according to his purpose and we thank God for allowing us to be a part of his plan. We want to continue to pray for those who are sick, those who are shut in, 
continue to pray for those who are bereaved, the loss of loved ones in times like this where we don't have the freedom to visit the hospitals and, and the different peoples uh, that are going through different things, but we do have the freedom to continue to pray and lift them up before the Lord. So we'll just continue to do what we can. I want to ask you to bow your head with me for just a moment. Father in heaven, we come again, Lord, and truly we come with thanksgiving in our heart. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. We thank you for the time such as this. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for looking over our faults and seeing our needs. And so much, Heavenly Father, that you would send your only begotten Son, that would come, Heavenly Father, and die for our sins create a better situation for a fallen and a broken people. Heavenly Father, as we bow God, we pray for those who are sick and those who are shut in. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would forgive us for all of our sins and, and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. We bow, Heavenly Father, just thanking you, Lord, just thanking you for being there. And Heavenly Father, when we look at our lives and we realize, God, that you didn't bring us this far to leave us, when we look at our lives, Heavenly Father, we realize, God, that even when we didn't know you, even when we had no fellowship with you, we realize, Heavenly Father, now, God, we realize that you have never been a time when you was not there, that you've always watched over us, that you have always protected us, Lord, and that you have always kept us. And Heavenly Father, we will take this moment, God, just to say thank you. And Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for every home, Heavenly Father, out there, everyone that is listening, under the sound of my weak voice, God, we pray you for their strength, for the guidance, for their lives, Heavenly Father, all of those, God, who are feeling just a little bit down and just a little bit confused and, and just a little bit uneasy, God, we pray, Heavenly Father, this morning that you would touch their spirit, touch their heart, God, and, and let them know, Lord, that you have not abandoned them. Let them know, Heavenly Father, that you are still in charge. We pray for those, Heavenly Father, who just don't know what to do, who are lost and never have committed their lives to you, Lord. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would stir them up and let them know, God, just how important it is to give their life to you and Lord and let them lead, let you lead and guide them. We pray for those, Heavenly Father, as we look and we realize, God, the, 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 the suicidal rate is escalating, God. We pray for those, Heavenly Father, who feel like there is no answer. We pray, Heavenly Father, that they would realize, God, that you are the answer. And, Lord, that you are able to help. We pray, Heavenly Father, that somehow or another you would connect them with somebody that knows you, someone who is able to give encouragement to their spirit. Let them know that you care. Heavenly Father, we pray for every home and every family, every community, every city, every nation, and every, every state. God, we just pray for peoples everywhere, all over the world. Pray for your blessings, Lord, according to your love and kindness, according to your tender love and your mercy. We claim victory in the name of Jesus. And we count it as already done. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're not going to be long, but we're going to look at a couple of scriptures here. And just talk about a few things. Hopefully, we can serve to encourage and also serve to warn. Because when we, regardless of what things look like to us, God has never wavered. There's never been a time when God has gotten confused and said, well, I don't know what to do. It's always steady. And he sees it before we get there. So I look at the scripture. I want to look at 2 uh, Corinthians. 5 and 10 and also St. Luke 16 and I will begin reading there at the 22nd verse. 2 Corinthians 5 and 2 it says for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one 
may receive things done in his body according to that he has done good or whether he has done bad. Praise God. St. Luke says, And it came to pass that the beggar died. He was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off, Lazarus was in his bosom. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in these flames. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime see thou good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all of this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from thence to you cannot neither can they pass to us uh, that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that I will send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father, Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. He said unto him, If I hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, nor one rose from the dead. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. And I am reminded how it is that God do not inspire scriptures to be written to amuse us. That how that when he inspired these scriptures to be written, they are written for us to to read and to meditate upon, to think upon, and to look at our own selves and make comparisons to the lives of the peoples in the scriptures in comparison to our own lives and, and to look and be quite clear and honest about what it is that we are seeing and give all ourselves a, a fair chance, an opportunity to be able to come through uh, this broken system and this broken world to come out on the other side doing well I'm going to talk using the subject for just a little while. When people with power do nothing. When people with power do nothing. And sometimes we look at people who are holding high offices and we just seem to, uh, uh, to put the power in their hands and say it's all about them. But I believe that God has given everyone who has a child to raise and to teach and to instruct. I believe he has power. I believe that every man that God has set over a household, I believe that he has power. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about how that as I look around and it's impossible to say anything without looking at what's going on in our world today. And how it is is so important that we see so many things that makes us angry and gets us upset. And how many things it is that cause us to want to move 
out of the zone of Christianity. It challenges our commitment. It challenges our heart. It challenges the very confession that we made. But I want to encourage Christians that don't forget to be a Christian. Don't forget what God has called you for. Don't forget your assignment. When I look at the scriptures and I think about how it was that when it was almost time for Christ to go to the cross, he went in the garden of Gethsemane, and the scripture said he went a little piece to pray. But he said to some of his disciples, you sit here and pray while I go over yonder and pray. Pray that you enter not into temptation. For Christ knew what time it was. For Christ knew what was about to take place. For Christ knew that the Father had sent him into the world to fulfill a specific purpose. He knew that it was time for that purpose to be fulfilled. He knew for that purpose to be fulfilled he had already set things in order. He had already set things in place. And he has given his disciples instruction what to do. You stay here and pray while I go over yonder and pray. Pray that you enter not into temptation because whenever this thing go down, you're going to be tempted to act in a manner that is not consistent with my values. In a way that is not consistent with my purpose. You're going to be tempted to carry out orders as you have always carried out orders, but pray that you would be prepared not to go there whenever this time rises. The scripture says, but they fell asleep. And how it is that a lot of times that natural order just seems to override us. Paul said it's this way. He says, when I choose to do good, evil is still present with me. How it is that the natural order, that the natural calls upon a man's life just seems to sometimes overpower the word of God, the word of God that has been placed in him. They know what God, the Lord Jesus, had told them. They knew that was that they were supposed to be a praying, but they just went to sleep. And when the trouble came, when Judas shows up, he shows up with a band of men because he had sold out the Lord. And whenever the disciples wake up, and the scripture says Peter grabbed his sword and began to swing and he cut off a man's ear. And Jesus told Peter, he said, put your sword up. Don't you know that they that take the sword shall perish by the sword? Don't you know that I can call for my father right now and he would send more than 12 legions of angels and he would fight my battle for me? But then how would the scripture be full, fulfilled? And they must be fulfilled. So what am I saying? I'm saying that in times like these when we are challenged on every hand and when we get in our minds and in our hearts and that we get so upset that we want to act out and we want to do something against the nature of God, against the calling of our lives, I want to encourage the Christians, of peop the peoples of God, the people who call themselves Christians, don't forget to be Christians. Don't forget that God has already given us a plan. Don't forget that we are already operating in a winning plan if we'll just hold on to God's unchanging hand. That sometimes it seems like God has forsaken you. Sometimes it seems like God has left you. Oh my God. The scripture says he may not come when we want him. He shall not come when Mary and Martha wanted him. But he sure enough showed up on time. I thought about how it was when the Lord went to the cross. 
and how it was as they began to taunt him. As he hanged on Calvary's cross, he hanged there, and someone is saying to him, if you are the Son of God, save yourself. Come down from that cross, and we'll believe you. But Jesus Christ kept hanging there. And the scripture says he hanged there from the sixth to the ninth hour. And as they continued to talk, and as one a thief says to him, if you are the Son of God, save yourself and save us. But he hanged on the cross. And he being in agony. And he cried out at one point and said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He felt like he had been forsaken. He was weak. He was, he was being broken. His body was being destroyed. And the father had to turn away from him a moment because he couldn't look at the sins that had been placed upon him. And it wasn't his sins. It was your sins and my sins. And he hung there until he gave up the ghost. But he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And what am I saying? Sometimes it may seem like God has forgotten you. Sometimes it may seem like that God has left you. But regardless of how hard things get, I say hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because you are still in God's plan. I said hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because God said my strength has made perfect in your weakness. When you will embrace your weakness. And just acknowledge the fact that I'm weak God. I have no power. I have nothing to fight my own battle for me. God said if you will hold still. Then I will fight your battle for you. When we can acknowledge who we are and where we stand and what our positions are and when we can humble ourselves, the Lord said he that humble himself shall be exalted for God resists the proud, but he give grace to the humble. Oh, praise his holy name. And regardless of all the taunting, all of the hard and cruel words, and all the condemnation that was put upon Christ, and how it was they take him down and rush to bury him. Oh, but the plan of God was working perfect. On the third day morning, our Savior got up. He said, all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. All power is heaven and earth is in my hand. And because I raised, you shall rise up also. When I looked and I thought about how the world looks right now, and God reminded me that I'm just answering prayer. And the times that sometimes we look at things and we look at things and we say it's all out of order. But God says a lot of times things have to be out of order for me to answer your prayers. God said it's not it's not a coincidence that there are rise up a pandemic worldwide. It's not a coincidence that people are told to stay home and social distance because this is the way to combat, to fight against what's going on. And while people are out of work, and while people are sent home and, and put on a stay-at-home position, it's not a coincidence that is a time when people are watching their TV set. They sit and watch a black man getting choked out nationwide. The things that blacks have been crying and calling out for justice for, for years. We always seen it, we know it for a long time. But it seems that the world has closed their eyes and shut their minds off to our plight and off to our cry. It seems like God has not heard us. 
when we watch over and over again when black men and women are mistreated and know they are not treated fair and it seems like our cries have gone on here but it's not a coincidence that God created a system he allowed a system to rise up where everybody would have time to take our case on their own selves I am reminded of a scripture that says every man should exalt his neighbor higher than his own self. Why did God tell us to exalt our nature higher than ourselves? Because God wants us to see one another. He wants us to look at our neighbor. He knew that we love ourselves. He knew that we would feed ourselves. He knew that we would clothe ourselves. We, he knew that we would do things in our best interest. He said, when you look at your brother, I want you to see him the same way. I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged when I see black and white and Hispanic and all races of people come together and they all are talking signs and saying black lives matter. We always know we matter, but thank God he has got the attention of the world. Worldwide, now they are carrying signs and saying black lives matter. Why now? Because it's time. Because God set the terms and God set the time. And whenever God set the terms and the time, it cannot be denied. I don't care who fights against it. Let every man be a liar. But let God be the truth. When I look at the scripture of rich man and Elijah, I'm not going to talk so much about a rich man, but I'm going to talk about a powerful man. A man who have power. A man who said every day and had all the good things of life. A man who could sit and look around him in his world and look around him in his community and look around even in his house and look around him in the place where he resides and have power to be a blessing have power to help power to change things and just sit there and enjoy himself the scripture shows us such a man that fared sumptuously every day he shows us a man who is in need, a man who is broken, a man who needs help, a man who has been discriminated against, a man who has been stepped on, a man who has been overlooked, a man who is not looking to be set in the main house. He just wants crumbs. I thought about George Floyd as I thought about Lazarus. The how it was is this man holds this knee on his neck and he's crying out. He just said, I just want to breathe. I just want to have what I'm supposed to have. That was all Elijah was, was saying. I just want crumbs. I'm not asking you to come into your house. I'm not asking to sit at your table and eat with you. I'm not asking you to, to treat me like one of your family members. I just need you to give me crumbs. That's been the cry of black men in America ever since 1619. To be brought in a strange land in 1619 and never be looked at as a human being until 1870 and never get to right to, to the citizens to vote until 1965. And then to spend so many other years having those years beat out of you and having things set up against you where when you try to exercise that vote that you are beat and broken. I say it's time. I say it's time for a change. And I say that when God get ready to bring about change, nobody can stop it. We wonder what's going on, but I just say that God is answering prayer. And the scripture said it came to pass that Lazarus died. The beggar died. It don't make no difference what your status is. It don't make no difference how much power you got. For the scripture says it's appointed unto man once to death. 
Then after death, then come judgment. But the scriptures also said that the rich man died. And hell they lifted up his eyes. And he was in torment and he cried out. But his cry came too late. He cried out. But his cry was here. But the cry could not afford him anything. Oh, I give him praise. I give God praise because God is hearing our cries. God is seeing our plight. And as the rich man cried out, he had no help. As this powerful man who had the opportunity to create change cried out. There was no one to answer his cry because he had not answered anybody else's cry. But the scriptures do say you reap what you sow. Whatsoever man sow, that sow also shall, shall he reap. And the scripture let us know that the Lord responded to him. He says, send Lazarus that he might dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. But the response was uh, that Lazarus can't come to you. And you can't come to him. Because there is a great gulf fixed between us and you. And regardless of what you want things to be now, it can't be. Because you missed your opportunity. So I encourage those as I get ready to close. I encourage those that, that has power. Whether you have a nationwide power, state power, city power, county power, or just the power of your own household. Whenever those cry that is under you, be certain whether I hear their cry or not, whether you hear their cry or not, God will hear their cry. God will give an answer because God is a just God. God is a fair God. God is a long-suffering God. But he will not always suffer. It is not God's will that any perish, but all come to repentance. Oh, I praise him. I praise him. This is the message. When powerful people do nothing, it don't end good for them, except they repent, except they change their lives. And I want to continue to encourage people, black peoples, white peoples, all peoples, that if you have Christianity attached to your name, you have a great responsibility to go with that attachment. But the scripture says, to whom much is given. Much is required. I'm thankful that I give God praise. I give him glory to his holy name. That he has opened the eyes of other peoples to our plight. God has heard our cries. And when I think about it, I think about the scripture teaches us about Noah. As Noah had drifted on the water for many, many days. And then the scripture said, but God, remember Noah. Noah was not a water creature. He was a land creature. And his body and his mind ached for land. And it seemed like God had forgotten him as he sent bird after bird and they came back. But one day he sent a bird and he didn't come back. And Noah knowed. That God had remembered him. And I thought about. As I get ready to go to my seat. I thought about how the children of Israel. Made it down to the Red Sea. And as they look. And they're terrified. Because they have nowhere to go. And, but Moses said stand still. And watch the salvation of God. Sometimes we just need to get in a still position and to realize right here where we are and we are in a weak position. 
We are in a weak position. We have no power to overcome the thing that has oppressed us. Sometimes you just need to stand still and watch the salvation of God. May God bless you and may he keep you. Now again, 731-234-1849. God bless you and thank you.